Giroud wants it in the middle. It's come back to say Kolasinac, it's Giroud, it's five. Well, it's hard on his team, who had their moments early in the second half, but now find themselves five down at the Emirates. Brady. It's Brady. That's a magnificent second goal. And this is Lingard. And that is a fierce drive and a terrific goal from Ashley Young once of this parish. The Hertfordshire boy has come home and speared. So many bodies back there, De Bruyne. Raheem Sterling! Oh my goodness! The last kick of the game at the Etihad! And look at the celebrations! Mane did. Nice turn from Sadio Mane. Mane across to Salah! It's rifled in! He didn't need long. It's young, it's a beauty, absolutely brilliant. Ashley Young is making the show his own. And Mariapa, Jesse Lincoln, that's a terrific goal. That is absolutely fizzing football from Jesse Lingard. All Brighton. Vardy! 1-0! On the stretch, but perfectly executed. Jamie Vardy again. And Rooney! Oh, my word! Wayne Rooney! What a way to complete the hat-trick. end of the Premier League season, the curtains are finally going to be drawn tomorrow evening on what has been a very, very brilliant season. No lots of things to talk about team, but the nature of the way Manchester City has won the league is what has probably caught the eye the most. Yes, Tony, it's, it's, it, they're just left with now one, one milestone, that is to, to hit 100, 100 points, which I think they will be targeted to win over, over Southampton come the final day. But they, they've scored the most goals. They've had the most assists. They, they, they have been, uh, Tony, uh, been able to, to have a keeper who has almost been there to, to, for the 16, number of, 16 clean 16 sheets. and falling behind the hair, I think it's acceptable. So in all departments, Tony, Man City have really been ticking well. It's been a very brilliant season for Pep and his charges there, of course. It's a season where, they, they, for the past two seasons, indeed, they've been investing a lot of money. So yeah. it will be very, very interesting to see how Sheikh Mansour keeps putting more money ahead of next season. We know how very, very tough it is to keep the Premier League uh, in England. It's very, very complicated there. But a lot of things, Liverpool had the best player of the season in Mohamed Salah. He has almost scooped all awards where he has been nominated. Yes, Tony has, he has scooped these awards. And we, it, it's, it's, it's something beautiful because most of these awards, Tony, if you're the best player in the Premier League, it's always that your team is also the champion. But this time, Mohamed Salah has been the sole player who has delivered the goods in Liverpool and Man City taking the trophy on the other hand. He's, he's won almost every award he has con contended for. And it, it's, big, it's big, big news for them, given that Liverpool is going to the Champions League. Yes, Salah has dipped in the form a bit, but I think Tony is a guy who will be up for it come, come the final of the Champions League. And don't forget, he's still chasing, <laughs> trying to beat that 31 goal record. He has 31 goals right now already. He is trying to go one ahead. Is tied with Suarez, Cristiano Ronaldo, and I think Robin Van Persie yep. for that uh, uh, record. He needs to do uh, to get one more goal while Liverpool take on Brighton and hope Albion at home in their final game tomorrow. But the top four teams, team, 
right now we see Manchester City going over Manchester United, yep. Liverpool there, but we see Tottenham leading the London Park, almost Chelsea and, Le uh, and Arsenal falling out of that, <laughs> of that top four. Does it represent a shift on, of power in both Manchester and, and, and London? Tony, I want to agree with you. I think there's been a, a shift. It is taking time for us to, to confirm that there's a shift. But I think when you look at the previous five years, Man City has had more titles than, than Man United. When you look at uh, in London, we will compare Arsenal mainly to Tottenham and we say that Tottenham has been able to, to, to keep uh, ahead, of, ahead of Arsenal. Yes, we've seen Chelsea has, has taken the trophy before, but Tottenham has the consistency. They're now becoming a, a, a consistent top four, top four team. This is their third season in a row, by the way, that they finish in the top four places. Yes, which is big, big credit to Mauricio Pochettino. He has done a, a whole lot of, 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 of stuff in, in, Tottenham, in Tottenham. I mean, the, the, the new stadium will be credited to his name. I think they'll be playing the last the last game in Wembley this weekend, and then they go back to to their to their or to the new White Hart Lane. I'm not sure they'll change the name or or Tony. But I would let's say there has been Tony a shift in in power, and Manchester now is blue, and we're trying to see North London Tony is becoming white. <laughs> That will be very, very interesting, of course. I'm sure it will be a lot of divided opinion, especially among the Blues fans, Chelsea. Ah, don't forget are the previous uh, winners of the, of the Premier League just last season. This has been a season to forget for Antonio Conte and his men. But they still have a big chance if Liverpool are to slip up tomorrow in, in the final, uh, in, the, in one of the days of final games, Chelsea must win that game that they'll be playing away at Newcastle. A team that doesn't give them a lot of respect. So it will be very interesting to see how Chelsea uh, attack that game. We know that they have a, an FA Cup final to look forward to. So if they can sneak into the top four and get that FA Cup, that will probably represent uh, very a, good not season. a bad season yeah. for Antonio Conte. Not very good too, but a good season, Tony, looking at how, how it's happening uh, uh, at Stamford Bridge right now. But I would, I would like to say, in the top four finish, Tony, we are looking at mainly Liverpool over, over Chelsea. But Liverpool is playing at Anfield uh, against Brighton, and, and Chelsea is going away to, to, St, to St James, yes, Newcastle. I, I, I feel Chelsea has, has more to do uh, over Newcastle. I think Newcastle wants to end the season with a win at home, and, and, and Liverpool at home also want a win. And yet Chelsea expects Liverpool to lose, not even a draw. We will take Chelsea through, Tony, if Chelsea is to win the other side. So I think Chelsea, Chelsea should be preparing for the Europa. Of course, it will be a very interesting to see how those Chelsea players go into next season playing the Europa League football. It's not a, 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 a league, a, a, a trophy that most of their players might be wanting to take part in, especially we know Eden Hazard is a player that is very, very interested in being in the Champions League, see our team there. But we've seen a resurgence under Mourinho this season for Manchester United. This second place finish now representing their best ever finish since Alex Ferguson left. Yes, Tony, it's it's the best ever finish ever since Sir Alex uh, left United. But the problem Moreno has divided opinion to at, 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 at Old Trafford with the Old Trafford faithfuls because he's getting the points. Yes, he's, he's, he's moving a step closer. But the problem is Moreno's football. It, it, it almost brings back the, the Van Gaal approach where United were doing a lot of possession without attacking. Moreno is looking at United scoring one goal. This is a team of Ferguson that used to score four, blistering, tearing teams up. Don't forget though that Manchester United started off the season with four, uh, almost three nil, four, uh, three four nil wins yeah. in a row. Yeah. So where has it gone wrong for Manchester United? I think, the, think? the first time you know, Moreno checked his his performance was I think against Liverpool, where he went defensive and every team sort of said, oh, they are not that good. If they can fear Liverpool after scoring four goals, and I think. They went the next the next game to to Huddersfield and, and and lost it. So that is where Mourinho's tactics dipped, and I think he lacked the confidence to attack the big boys, and that's worrying for Mourinho. I I believe this season he will try again to patch up with a few players here and there, and if he does not turn in a challenge for the championship, the next season, then Mourinho I think will be out of all trouble. Do you think though Mourinho will plug that right wing position that we've been talking about all season? Manchester United don't seem to have a right winger or play, a, a player that can play in that right uh, right place uh, or right place on the wing. 
they've tried matters sometimes. Yeah. It, it, it is it, not it, a natural it, it number seven. It's not a natural number seven. Look up who's the player that would be benefiting from crosses coming from that yeah. position. Yeah. Do you think maybe the energy of Antonio Valencia going across the entire line is what is probably holding them back from getting a number Tony, seven? Tony, if the United hierarchy has sat and, and, and they've looked at the overall view of the season, then it will be that number seven role that everyone will be saying, where are we going to put the money? Are, we, are they going to look back at Perisic? I'm not sure he has been blistering this, this season, Tony. Malcolm but is another player that's Ma Malcolm is another, yeah, another player, but I still think United must take time and identify the, the number seven next season. Of course, it will be interesting to see how Manchester United try to push Manchester City next season. They'll definitely be looking to try and close that gap. It's standing at almost 20 points yeah. right now <laughs> between number one and number two. Gap, that's right? a very, very big gap. Manchester United shouldn't be that far away from the trophy contention there. But of course, we see a big, a big, big team that has been that has almost now fallen out of out of uh, proportions is Aston Wenger's uh, Arsenal that have had a very, very poor season this season. They didn't qualify for the Champions League last season. They have again failed this season and they'll have to settle for another season in the Europa League. Don't forget, this will be Arsene, manager, Arsene Wenger's last game in charge of Arsenal. Yes, Tony, it's the last game. And I think that that's the, the positive and negative Arsenal fans to look into it. Especially the farewell was so emotional. But I think after about a month or two, the fans will accept that, yes, Wenger's reign is, is finished. and. And they need to start another chapter in, in this great football club. I say great because they, they transformed the Premiership. They brought in competition to, to the Premiership. But you now have to look at Arsenal. Who are the who are the available managers out there? Who can they go for? Are, are there are unsettled managers? I think Ancelotti can be the quick fix. You look at uh, the, the Atletico man if he can come. You look at the Juventus guy. This, all these guys look to be comfortable in, in their current position. And another coach that was mentioned, Massimiliano Allegri of Juventus, yeah. came out last week and said his work at Juventus is not finished. It, exactly, Tony. That's why the board must take time. And I think the fans have to also accept. The good news, I've said this before, Tony, we, Arsenal would have experimented for Man United. They have gone through a lot of turbulence and still undergoing the turbulence after Sir Alex left. So you would expect even Arsenal to go through, through that period. The problem is they are now in Europa. It might, it might be two or three more seasons in Europa, which will be hard, hard for Arsenal to take. It will be very interesting to see how Arsenal um, kick on after Wenger. Of course, they'll be playing their final game against Huddersfield away from home. Very, very interesting. They are in sixth place, which is not a place that Arsenal should be. Ten points behind Chelsea in fifth. That's very, very far off the pace. 97 points for Man City and 60 points for Arsenal. That's a big, big gap here. That gap tells you that Arsenal is not yet equipped to challenge for the title. And even if the gap looks like that this season, still you worry that Arsenal cannot cut all those points come next season. So it, it's, it's, it's really hard for Arsenal, but I think they've taken a very good decision, first of all, to, to get Wenger out and then try to see to be able to build up a new team. And of course, Wenger has mentioned to the board that they should try and get a manager in before the World Cup so that the manager can start overseeing some transfers before the next, beginning of next season. We know that the World Cup is a very, very important time yeah. for all managers to try and look at the team, the players that they might want into their team next season to try and see who they need to keep try and see who from the World Cup they can pick up. We know that they can be very, very good and very big flops from the World Cup. Yes, too. We've seen it before. But it will be a very, very interesting hard time for Arsenal there. After their manager leaves, they play his final game in charge at Huddersfield. Tomorrow, of course, on the final day. Very, very interesting at the top. The top six sides now almost certainly confirmed there in the Premier League. Tomorrow will be the final round of fixtures. But very interesting things, team across the table when you go just below in the relegation battles there's still a lot of activity there's still a lot of activity Tony in the bottom but at least it, it came towards the, the end we know now that Stock City and, and West Brom Tony are, are out of the Premier League but still Swansea with a, a minimal chance Tony I still think the Swansea is out of out of out of the Premier League because the, their goal difference is too too inferior to what Southampton has, Tony, and they could be the, the third team joining, dropping from, from the top. But I think all these teams gave it a go. And you, you saw with the, the, the changes in managers that took place, we had a lot of overhauls in, in, in the bottom, bottom teams that, that changed their managers. But I think it, it, when you look...
Swansea and I'm like, they, they, they gave it their all, trying to change the manager, but I think they, they will go down, Tony. When you look at the replacements coming in, of course we know what Zampton was too superior for the teams down there to qualify with some games to go. With Jorge Mendes' influence. Jorge Mendes' influence, almost running that, that club as the manager, Tony. And then Cardiff City is back also. So if, if Swansea goes down, we know Wales will be proud that at least they have had a direct replacement in, in, in Cardiff there. The, the, third, the third team here, Tony, there are playoffs ongoing here and there. We, I know we have Middlesbrough in the mix, Aston Villa is there. Uh, Fulham and Derby. Yeah, Derby beat Fulham yesterday 1-0, but there's an, an away leg before the final at Wembley. So there's a lot happening down there, but I, I think it has been an interesting season. And what happened this season, I think, is a caution to, to the regular Premier League clubs that when the new boys come in, they, 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 they mean Don't take them for granted. Yeah, they, they mean <laughs> business, and we're seeing it this season that all the new boys, Sony, have been able to stay, and the regulars are going down. It will be very, very interesting to see how uh, Cardiff uh, and, and Wolves integrate themselves into the Premier League. We know that Vicentan of Cardiff has made it uh, his goal to try and purchase some new players as they enter the, the, the Premier League. Ha Wolves had a very, very good transfer season last season. They brought in uh, uh, Diogo Jota, a very interesting player from, uh, from Spain. They brought in very, very interesting coach, Nuno Espirito Santo, yep, yep. a coach that has a very big, huge, huge, huge experience from Valencia, Valencia yeah. and very, very big clubs. So they brought in this coach, Jorge Mendes' influence suddenly, helping them there to get some of those players. But of course, it will be very, very interesting. But this is a season team where we saw a lot of firings for the managers. Yes, Tony, a, a lot of teams uh, had, had, had managers getting fired here. I think the very first, the very first culprit. Team was, uh, culprit was Frank De Boer, who who lost all the past seven games, Tony. And, and I think the firing also paid off because when they brought in uh, Roy Hogson, we, we, we still doubted what Hogson would do in this team, but we, we all can now appreciate credit to Roy Hogson. We credit him and he had some games to spare, Tony. It, it's really hard because I thought they began with the negative seven games, Tony. <laughs> we also saw Everton firing Kuman uh, and then bringing in Big Sam, Big Sam dividing a lot of opinion. I, I think even the fans had had to vote if he should stay or go. And, and we had stop firing or so. We we had uh, West Brom Tony. But I thought those two did it, did the business so so late. That's why they, they're going down. Swansea did it. Uh, Watford also had had uh, fired Marco Silva. We we knew Marco Silva left because Everton was courting him. But it's an, a season where a lot of guys got fired. But also the firings, I think, paid off, Tony. It was very, very interesting. Of course, no manager can just rest on their lures. But also, like we mentioned, it's always, you don't have to leave it late to fire a manager. Like Southampton, I think, delayed, took a long time to fire Mauricio Pellegrino. Yeah. Uh, it was a very, very big problem. Alan Paddy came in for, uh, <laughs> for, for West Brom. I was looking at Failed the statistics. 18 and... games, he had all, only one win. Yeah. Very, very poor results. He should have gone earlier than that. You don't have to wait until the final month of the season no. for, 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 to try and steady the ship. We see how well Darren Moore has outstanding. Just imagine our, an extra month for Darren Moore and probably West Brom would have been... Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a hard one they're going to take, Tony, but it's also a lesson. They say we learn from the past and it's a lesson for, for West Brom. Of course, big, big news there. We'll have a very, very brilliant round of, of games being played tomorrow. We know Huddersfield will be hosting Arsenal, who are in sixth place, Liverpool host Brighton and Hope Albion in the final game. Uh, Manchester United will be hosting the World, uh, Watford there with Troy Deeney, a player that has been scoring, has scored in his last three games against Manchester United, but all have been penalties team. Yeah. So that will be a very, very interesting game to watch. Spurs will be taking on Leicester, a side that have pushed and pushed, but probably can only finish ninth in this season. They've tried and probably try and turn around the early, early poor form yeah. that they had in this season. They'll probably be looking to go better next season. Newcastle will be hosting Chelsea, like we mentioned, and of course, Southampton, who are who just narrowly survived the relegation. It's not yet over, but looks like it's comfortable they for them. They should, They'll be hosting the Champions City, who are still chasing the record for most points in the Premier League season. Don't forget that we'll be bringing you all those predictions and for all the rest of the games there on, on our Facebook page. Don't miss that out as it comes to you. Team, very quickly while we wrap up uh, what has been uh, in this season, who has been your best player? Mohamed Salah. <laughs> <laughs> Mohamed Salah. Tony. Does any goal from Mohamed Salah come to mind? Yes, Tony, a lot of goals. I I, I, I look at the weekend when he scored uh, that goal against Watford, Tony. He looked to have not had space 
but he managed to, to put it in. A very, and this, very this, the same weekend we had Sanchez failing to, to score with an empty net. Also the goal against, against Tottenham Tony, I thought it was all written around it with Messi. And then I thought the goal over Manchester City Tony, yeah, we all see that the keeper was off his, his line, but the composure to strike a ball with that accuracy, Tony, I think Mohamed Salah deserves it. Though there's a opinion with De Bruyne also having had a good season, but I still think Mohamed Salah, Tony, for me, was the best. It was, it, it's, it's definitely been my best player of the season. My favorite goal, though, is the header that he had in that game against Watford. Not looking at the goal and just striking the ball. I think the last time I saw that goal was when Lionel Messi scored it against Edwin Van der Sar. Yep. Very, very brilliant season that Mohamed Salah has had there and will be hoping here in Africa, especially, hoping that he takes that form into the World Cup and probably breaks that 31 goal barrier that is still, you know, we know he's still chasing, Tony, I want... you know he's still chasing the, the, the Champions League and European Golden Boot. Yes, Tony is chasing. I was looking at Mohamed Salah's highlights in the last two games. He's, he's been missing really clear chances, and the only way I think he's going to break it should be through a penalty. I think we'll, penalty <laughs> we'll definitely be keeping our eye out on that one. It's been a very, very entertaining season here on the Tony and Team Show. We'd like to thank you for all your support, all your comments, all your feedback that you've been giving to us. Look forward to a very brilliant next season. We'll be bringing you the FA Cup final, of course. We'll be bringing you the Champions League final. Yeah. Don't forget to tune on our Facebook page, The Tony and Tim Show. Don't forget to click the subscribe button on our YouTube channel as well. We love that you've been following us. Goodbye for now. Enjoy your weekend. Goodbye.